Jake Butt here, guys, live down from the National Championship Convention Center down in Houston, and we got some big time news for you guys, Michigan faithful. We need your help to keep our team. Last year, Champion Circle launched the One More Year Fund to support key players coming back, like Blake Corum, Trevor Keegan, and Zach Sinner, who elected to return to Michigan for one more year. Now we're launching the Those Who Stay NIL campaign. Our rivals are coming after many of our key players, trying to induce them to leave Michigan. It's time for the Michigan family to show our players how much we appreciate them and want them back in the maze in blue. To keep the momentum going, head over to those who stay, uofm.com. Again, that is those who stay, uofm.com to support. Go blue. Feel the sun on your face and enjoy the ride with a brand new truck or SUV from your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Whether you're north, south, east, or west, your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers are in your neighborhood. From their impressive family of SUVs to the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever, your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers will put you in the driver's seat. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Visit ChevyDetroit.com. All right, welcome back to The Lab, presented by Champion Circle. Head over to Champion Circle, uofm.com, to find out how you can support your student-athletes. Exciting news right now, Michigan just launched Champion Circle Valiant, just launched a new year of the One More Year Fund. This time it's called Those Who Stay. Remember last year, this is a big reason why the team is here. Blake Corum returned, Trevor Keegan returned, Zach Zinter returned, return. Mike Barrett, Mikey Sainer still. You can go down the list. You guys help, helped fund NIL opportunities for the team to get us here. And it's a glorious moment. Glorious moment for a few reasons. And at the top of my list right now is because we get to hang out with Rich Eisen for the next short, short while. And Rich, I ran into you. It's been crazy yes. the, the last few times. Yes. We've, you know, it's been a hectic time to get this up and running. It was hectic hmm. when I saw you out in Pasadena. Uh, yeah. um, how you doing, man? Uh, last time I saw you, I was hitting the men's room uh, after Michigan gave the ball back to Alabama uh, in the fourth quarter, and we needed a defensive stop in order to give an offense that hadn't scored a single point in the second half yet a chance to go down the field and tie the game. And yeah. you were coming out of the men's room. I was going into the men's room. You and I passed uh, each other. And uh, it didn't feel great, you know. Yeah. It did not feel great to either of us because uh, the weird stuff that uh, always seems to crop up in Michigan bowl games last year's Fiesta Bowl was four quarters of weird stuff. Um, it, it, it had popped up uh, in the form of J.J. McCarthy throwing an interception in the first throw for a snap, which thankfully got called back. Yep. And then led to a muffed punt, which led to a touchdown for Alabama. Um, we saw uh, another uh, special team snafu on a field goal being missed. We saw multiple mistakes being made uh, that Michigan hadn't made all year long. So you and I didn't feel very good about each other's hopes for this Zoom, quite frankly. Um, and then... My goodness, Michigan got the stop that it needed. Sharon Moore got in his bag for the last drive. One tendency breaker after another. Jim having to go for it on fourth and two. And Blake Corum making that play with McCarthy on that fourth down. Roman Wilson overcoming the block in the back. More weird stuff uh, to make that incredible high point catch on a dart that got tipped at the line of scrimmage. And thankfully because McCarthy throws such a tight spiral. It just kept on spiraling right in the hands of Wilson, whose yards after the catch set himself up for a touchdown mm -hmm. on a beautiful play call and execution. And then overtime happened after yet one last muff punt almost sunk the whole damn thing. I, I, I honestly cannot believe what I saw after seeing you for the last time before now. Jay. I know. Because, I, Rich, that was my first Rose Bowl. I'm sure you've been to a couple, but everyone told me, hey, it's the most – it's the best environment you can ever watch a football game in. Right. You know, wait till the sun's setting. And when 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 we ran into each other, 
the sun was setting, but yes. it didn't feel like a glorious moment. It was, uh, I certainly felt uneasy, right? Yeah, it felt and, like and, sundown for, on the whole season. Uh, the first Rose Bowl I've ever, uh, I was ever um, at, well, the first time I went to the Rose Bowl was my senior year of college. I was covering the team for the Michigan Daily, the greatest student publication in all of uh, higher education. And um, and so uh, it was game two of the 1989 season, Michigan at UCLA, and I went to that game, and that was a, a last-second field goal. I believe J.D. Carlson was the one who kicked that one for Michigan, who was starting Elvis Gerback on the road for the first time in what turned out to be Bo Schembechler's final season. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we beat Ohio State and made the Rose Bowl, and I covered that game back in the Rose Bowl press comp, uh, press box for a second time in that season. And, um, you know, Bo, God bless him, in his final uh, game of his three yards in a cloud of dust ca uh, career, decided to call for a fake punt to make sure Michigan didn't give the ball back to USC and try and win that game. And it worked to perfection only to have it called back to on a hold by Bobby Abrams, mm -hmm. who made the NFL for the Giants uh, eventually and and it was a terrible call that Bo made a little bit worse by throwing his headset so hard he nearly went ass over tea kettle onto the beautiful Rose Bowl turf and 15 yards on top of that and Michigan lost which was again you know weird stuff that usually happens so this team you know is so special in so many ways not just because of the way that Jim built it but the way that Sharon Moore and Jesse Minter and the rest of that staff coach it, but the way the rest of the kids have just absolutely hung in there and banded together. And it's truly the first, I guess, for you know my perspective, talking into a microphone every day on a national show, uh, it's the first instance in which Michigan's the villain, mm. uh, coast to coast. And the Michigan versus everybody armor has been remarkable to see employed and then obviously put into use in such a way that a team can come down from a long day of mistakes and come back from it and beat Alabama and yeah. leave Nick Saban talking about how well coached the team is and how tough the players are. I, I couldn't tell you how more proud of these kids, grown ass men, um, I, I couldn't be prouder, Jake. Oh yeah, Rich, I'm 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 right there with you, and and thanks for laying that all out because you know the thing I was most excited to talk to you about is I, I feel this season feels special, but I also know Washington feels like their season yeah. special. Anytime you go to a national title, you feel like it's a special season, and it certainly is. But for every reason you just listed. And when you listen to the guys after the game, Mikey saying we're still being interviewed down on the field. And they're like, Mikey, you shut him down in the back end. Your secondary had a great game. How'd you do it? And he immediately says, but did you see the D line? You know, it's just selflessness. It feels so special for so many reasons. You've covered all of sports mm -hmm. for so much longer oh, than wow. I can even conceptualize. Yeah. You know, how do you put this into context? Like where does this to you, how different is this season? How special is it? Well, it's been special from from jump, from the fact of of how the last two years have gone, and and how um, the general narrative about Michigan was that Harbaugh wasn't going to ever get it done, and the twenty twenty one season happens, and Aiden Hutchinson happens to lead the way. But then we get, you know, curb stomped by Georgia in the Orange Bowl, where we could see we're not there yeah. yet, right? And so the general sense, again, outside of obviously our world, is that Michigan was Fugazi and is one and done. I certainly got that when I was talking with my chest at the uh, mm -hmm. Hall of Fame induction ceremony jacket dinner that I host every year yeah. in Canton and have gotten nothing but heckled for six straight years and I talked with my chest and went right back at all the Ohioans in that room and everyone's like yeah that, that's great we'll, we'll see you in the horseshoe next year and then we do it again no one not just do it again but we do it again with authority and then uh we go into this season 
hoping that everybody's coming back and those who stay and obviously what we're talking about here with the champion circle and the 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 nil drive that you're talking about in this day and age and in this world you do need to do something like that to get these kids to come back and i proffer to say that will be the first order of business uh you know as soon as the game's over to make sure a bunch stay and 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 again um for them to come back only to have what what um befell will be the word that i use uh jim harbaugh to sit out the first three games and and get through those first three games despite the opponents that we were playing we should we should win those are the games we should win we go about our business and start building a season and building a season and building a season and then straight up all all of us are are blindsided um by what 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 happened with connor stallions and how we now feel the michigan way and the michigan man way um is totally thrown off center and i know speaking for myself and and all of my you know friends and and uh, fellow Michigan alums, we were thrown off our axis. And the fact that the players weren't is an incredible testament to them. And again, what Jim has built and Sharon Moore and Jesse Minter are coordinating and the rest of that staff with Mike Hart, who's one of my guys too. It, it truly is remarkable. And, and so that all together is so unprecedented and I understand Washington's 14 and 0 and they feel it and I don't blame them I don't blame them they're insanely talented I'm going to be talking about a ton of those players at the combine in early March and at the draft in Detroit in April but what Michigan has been able to do and was able to do with one more three game suspension of Jim and being thrown on them on a plane ride to Penn State, During and the then air. how how to handle all of that? Yeah, and then Maryland being the ultimate trap game before Ohio State, without Harbaugh again. For 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 us to basically in in our world, uh, what I said, um, I, I was hopefully speaking for all of the alums, is that the only way through all this is to win every last damn game on the schedule. Yeah. And so far, that mission has been accomplished because I'm not hearing about cell phone cameras and ticket purchases and all that stuff that you we still don't know and may never know how it actually affected a single down. Everyone yeah. just assumes it did. And I know, again, what anybody else outside of our champion circle would think about that. But we don't know, and I don't think we will ever know. And I think what the last six games, three without Jim, and uh, obviously, I guess, five games, and what this sixth game will also prove, I believe, um, is that all we had to do was just hunker down, talk about Michigan versus everybody, even though everyone outside of our circle thinks we're victimizing ourselves when everyone else that we played against were the true victims. Too bad is basically what I was thinking. And all we have to do is just win every game on our schedule because nobody yeah. came out of that Rose Bowl thinking that we had Alabama's plays at all. And it's yeah. totally been flipped on its head. And now it's all about us going into completing the mission against a very good Washington team, if not excellent. We'd yeah. like to thank today's sponsor, Angel & Company. Certified public accounting firms, Angel & Company, PLLC is a family-run business that has been providing unsurpassed business and tax expertise critical to businesses, individuals, and nonprofit institutions for over 40 years. Angel & Company prides themselves in providing personalized service while at the same time offering the expertise of the national accounting firms throughout the country. They offer multiple accounting and tax services and have helped both current and past Wolverine student-athletes with their accounting needs. Yeah. Yes. When when the selection Sunday comes out and, you know, that there was that initial reaction, which, of course, only Michigan, Michigan was the only team that had cameras in the room. You know, I thought that was a little bit strange, but Coach Harbaugh had a, you know, when he's getting the inner coach Harbaugh's um, doing an interview down there and he kind of starts to reflect on the season. And he said, hey, this has kind of been a spiritual journey for our players. And as I hear you talk, 
about the decade prior, and I hear you talk about 2021, and I think about this season, and I think about what a spiritual journey really is. It's facing a demon, like every great journey in, in, in story, spiritual story. There's a, it's David versus Goliath, right? It's, it's you versus some obstacle or some ceiling. And Michigan has done that. It's been a few years in the making. The the Goliath was Ohio State. You can't beat your rival. As you said, then it was, can you beat them on the road? Then it was, hey, can you do it three in a row to make it a trend? Can you win your conference? And they've done all that. And then the next ceiling, the next deem, and the next Goliath is to beat the best the SEC has to offer, to win a playoff game. And as I listen to you talk, and as we think about Monday night, where you're playing an undefeated Washington team, who they've been counted out. People have been wanting them to sure. wanting, expecting them to lose all year. And yet here they are, you know, they're like the monsters. It's Michael Penix and Roma Dunze. And you could go down the list. That offense is so high flying. You know, as you said this with the whole situation with stallions, the only thing you can do is to win so big that you become undeniable. And in a sense, it's like, this is the perfect matchup. Of course you want to play Alabama. You don't want to play Florida State. Of course, you want to play Alabama and Nick Saban, and you want them at their best. Of course, you want to play Washington undefeated, and you want them at their best. It it almost feels, Rich, like divine timing to me uh, as I look at I this. Hope, my God, I hope. And it, and it could be, right? And it, I hope as well. I do too, man. I mean, for sure. And um, Washington, again, is an outstanding team, and it's kind of – blowing my mind that it's uh you know gonna be a big 10 game forevermore right conference game so it's it really is at a crossroads of of the sport in itself and obviously our program and who knows where you know uh I, you know nfl network studios is across the street from sofi stadium which yeah. should never be the home of the rose bowl by the way and um and i i i I don't know if um, you know. I'll look across the way and I'll see Jim Harbaugh there with a, a lightning bolt on his on his hat. You know, I just don't know. We don't know. Um, and again, I just if that's the case, I just would love obviously for him to go out with a championship. Yeah. But I, I just want him happy. I mean, really, what what uh, what 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 uh, what this program has been turned into is exactly what his vision was when he first took the job and what he was able to do. When yeah. that awful COVID season happened, you come out of it, you change your staff, you get younger, you get smarter, um, yeah. and you change your ways. You you figure out a different way in this ever-changing world, certainly with college football. My goodness. I mean, that's the other reason why you wouldn't blame Harbaugh for going to the pros, because there's actually rules around free agency there, you know? So yeah. um, Monday night's going to be great. Um, I can't wait for it. I'm very excited for it. I never, you know, I, I I can't believe we're in the national championship game. But then again, I should because it's all part of a plan, all part of an execution that that this team has 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 stuck the landing on pretty much right now. And um, and so <sighs> that's the answer. The answer is to get through the whole damn thing. And and somebody, you know, I had Charles Woodson on the show, and I asked him. Um, on, uh, on Tuesday, the day after the Rose Bowl, I had him on and I'm like, Hey, so how does this team compare to your 97 team that won at the Rose Bowl? Yeah. And he basically said, they've got one more game to go. And if they win it, they're better there the, the, that his 97 team didn't yeah. have an opportunity to go play Nebraska. They split the title and that's what's yeah. next to his, you know, his team's name is co-champions of the, of, of the sport that this up team has an opportunity to win the championship. And I put that, that video on uh, my show's Instagram feed and my Instagram feed. And somebody responded in the comments as, you know, trolls uh, occasionally do. What will you do? You know, when the NCAA comes in years from now and vacates the championship as if that would happen. And um, his answer was, I'm going to put on my Wolverines national championship hat and shirt and go blue. And yeah. that's the answer. And that's what this season has turned into. Nobody thought it would. Nobody thought it would, but it has. And the team and the players have come through with the ultimate flying colors of maize and blue. And I cannot wait for Monday night. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. 
um, and um, and hope that you know the world that we live in right now that Michigan is dominant, not just dominant um, in its own conference, but dominant over Ohio State, and is now considered better than Alabama, which we certainly didn't a few years ago when we got blown out by them in a bowl game, and that we're now one win away from being able to stake the claim that we're the best, yeah. the leaders and best, victors valiant, that our fight song would have a completely new meaning to it yeah. in 2024, calendar year 2023 season. I can't believe it, Jake, and I'm, I'm yeah. fired up. I'm fired up. Oh man, I, I completely, completely agree. And, you know, I think about this season and, you know, it, any outside circumstance, any adversity, like adversity introduces a man to himself. It's a saying as old as time. Right. And I think if nothing else, what, you know, I remember at, being asked when coach Harbaugh found out, we, we knew he was going to be suspended for the first three games and, you know, respect to the opponents, but we all knew that it, you know, that the team was going to win those games. And I was asked, Hey, well, what, what, what are you looking for? I was like, I want to see how this group of seniors responds without their head coach. I just want to see their maturity because if they want to win a national title, I just want to see how they respond. And they they passed with flying colors. You know, find out Coach Harbaugh is going to be suspended while they're in the air in the traveling air. to Penn State. How do they respond? How do you respond when you face adversity versus Maryland? How do you respond in, you know, Ohio State it was a must-win game for the Buckeyes this year without Jim Harbaugh. And they responded great. And, and I think what we've been able to see is how special. Mm -hmm. We would have known how special these guys are regardless. But because of the outside circumstances, it's become undeniable the character of these young men, how special they are. You know, I think of a, you know, those who stay will be champions. Play yeah. for them. A guy that could have left. I, I certainly thought he was going to leave. I thought he should have left, you know, to go to the NFL and pursue that dream. There was no guarantee the knee was going to recover. There was no guarantee he was going to come back. There was no guarantee he was going to be back here, but it was undeniable. When you think about the character, Rich, of, of these guys, and you've covered a lot of teams, you've, you've, you've followed Michigan for a number of years. I mean, what can you say about the character of yeah. the individuals on this team? Well, I mean, you, 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 I don't know how I can add to it. You're very eloquent right there, Jake. And um, it, it really is something to behold. And Blake is obviously um, a personification of it. I've never met San Restrill. I, I, uh, I'm looking forward to meeting him at the combine. Um, I've, I've never met him, and, I'm, and I've, I've, you know, I've, I've met McCarthy, and I've gotten to, you know, chit chat with him every now and then uh, throughout the season. I try not to bother anybody, but I just love, you know, the smiley face on his, on his, uh, on his offhand, and and just his way of staying still you know he turned into yeah. tom brady at the yeah. end of the at the end of the rose bowl just yeah. stay calm make your throws don't get too crazy just stand yeah. there and execute the plays are there it's right in front of you just stay calm and do it which is what the team has been able to do all year long and that's what we love about michigan football you know that's yeah. what we love about it rich what what's when you think about a championship team like there, it's really not that big of a difference between a good team and a great team and a championship team they're like subtle little differences in my opinion what what to you is the difference between a great team and a championship team well i mean a great team and a championship team are the ones that can overcome the adversity and the mistakes they're going to happen they happen all the time i mean <laughs> i would sure love for monday night to be one of those rock and chair games you know yeah. All right, you, yeah. go, you, go up, you go up 21 yeah. nothing, and you're just sitting there the whole time and you just, you know, like the end of trading places, yeah. you know, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis, you know, um, you know, I mean, I, I doubt it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, yeah. I would love that. And, 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 um, you know, only one NFL team's ever gone undefeated throughout its entire season. So, and I, I think about those, those NFL films documentaries we show on NFL network every year. Um, called America's Game, where it features th people, th three players or 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 figures from the previous year's Super Bowl winners, and every single one of those documentaries includes a point where they all feel like they're not going to win it, or they all remember where something was on the line, or they yeah. all remember that something in the locker room was happening, or this play happened, or that happened in the huddle, and they all had to overcome it. 
And that's what happens all the time. So the difference between being great and a champion is to be able to overcome the obstacles. And men, you know, just to revisit our conversation at the beginning, the number of obstacles that Michigan placed for themselves and the Rose Bowl uh, was was why you and I, when we passed each other <laughs> in the atrium, we were like, oh, God, I, I, I don't know. Um, but they did. And they are the ones who can dig deep. And they are the ones who clearly have a difference about them. Yeah. They are the ones who have helped turn this program around. They are the ones who have who have um, executed or and and been the tip of the spear that um, that Jim has put in you know Michigan's hands. And I that's why you feel that way about him. But yeah. Washington has done the same thing in their games against Oregon, in their games in the Pac-12. In their game against Texas, they were they, they you know they boy did they really give Texas an opportunity to win the game at the end, but yeah, uh, they won it and and you know they won it in New Orleans where I'm glad we didn't play, you know, right there in the Gulf South. I'm sure a lot of Longhorns and uh, that's yeah. why I was also <laughs> when uh, when uh, when Texas was scoring those touchdowns at the end and you could see those those dudes in their cowboy hats and their neckerchiefs dressed, you know, in the full on Texas Longhorn gear. And I'm like, Oh, that's right. We have to play them in Houston. If they win, I'm like, okay, now that would be a yeah. challenge as well. But I truly thought about how that would play into the Michigan versus everybody mentality. And okay. So if it's Texas, so be it. Michigan could do that because everybody's kind of hated on them this entire year and they have blocked it out. So I think that's, yeah, that's the difference between great and, and champion. Man, it's, it, you're, you're so spot on. And I think about, you know, the season as a whole, everything that's happened almost prepared them for that adversity within the game. Oh, yeah. I, I, you know, that first drive. So Samaj Moore, Morgan muffs the punt, Bama scores and Michigan needs to respond. And, and they drove right down and responded. There was a fourth down in that drive that, you know, they're so well versed in challenging situations. It didn't, it would miss your, you, you could miss it how quickly that fourth down was because it was third down, didn't get it. They didn't look to the sidelines to right. say, hey, coach, are we going or not? Well, I mean, that drive, it was third down, snap the ball and go. That, that drive in particular, I was sitting in front of Joel Klatt and his family for the, for the Rose Bowl. And, you know, after Quorum caught the touchdown pass to, to, to tie the game. I, I turned around to Joel and I said to him, you know, out of anybody in our business, you've probably seen more foot Michigan football with your own two eyes than anybody else. Yeah. Now, I know you've done, you, you did a few yeah. of their, their games this year, but I think Clyde had probably half dozen Michigan football yeah. games this year on Fox. And I turned to him and I'm like, you see them call any of these types of plays that these motions and these pre-snap movements and, and, you know, having five wide, but then all of a sudden pre-snap three guys start bunching together and sort of like a, an inverse triangle, like the way yeah. the, uh, the, uh, the way the Rams do the way the Niners do. I mean, I see a lot of that stuff by the Rams where they have the same formation and run a ton of different plays out of it. Yes. But then some of them are the plays that they just, be just like a like one of those tunes that you love to play you know on your you know on in your you know in your car where it's just a beat a catchy beat and yep. you just keep on hammering it over and over and over again yeah. Michigan was doing that on that drive and the final one as well yep. and I turned to cloud I'm like have you seen them call he goes nope and I'm like okay so our OC is getting deep in his bag, and I see what this team mm -hmm. was up to for the last four weeks. And sure enough, uh, another aspect about it, um, after you know the game and later on in the week, I saw um, Nick Saban say that Michigan was the first team that huddled against yes. Alabama, and yeah. that and that was something they did not uh, compute, didn't know how to handle that. So. You know, with all due respect to the first few years of Jim's tenure at Michigan, we weren't doing stuff like that. We right. weren't we weren't motioning. We weren't coming up with some creative ways. We were just kind of doing the same stuff, and um, and it was working, but not yeah. to the tune of the last three years. Yeah. 
I love Moore, man. I think you know, um, I I like I like the way he comports himself. I lo- even when he was cursing his head off, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. crying after the Penn State game. But I, could you imagine? It's your first yeah. your first go around, and you learn about it. 48 hours before 24, right. 30, 30 hours before that you're right. going to have to do it. And then you coach against Ohio state. I, again, I'm, I'm, I couldn't be a bigger fan of his. And obviously if, if, if uh, the program winds up in his hands, um, I, you know, I know a ton of people that wouldn't be terribly yes. uh, concerned um, if that's what happens, but at any rate, yeah. that's, that's the long story in short of what you're talking about that, yeah. that drive when they fell down seven, nothing, and then the drive that they had to have, like the ultimate had to have moment. Um, in the in the had to have moments, Michigan won that game. They got the drive to tie the game. They executed everything, even with that block in the back mistake. They overcame it. Yep. Um, yep. And Alabama's had to have moment. It was a low snap, and Milrow, I think, maybe panicked a quick bit and just ran straight into the yep. strength of Michigan's defense. And now we're sitting here getting ready for the natty yeah and there it is right that's the difference between the championship teams is what do right you there. do do you rise and and i completely agree you know sharon's got my vote you know that ohio state game if you closed your eyes if you didn't know if you just woke up from a coma that game you would have had no idea jim harbaugh was not the coach yep. the way he called it and one final note because all those pre pre snap shifts and motions not one pre-snap that penalty, penalty right not well, guys, unfortunately, it uh, looks like, Rich, we had some issues with the Wi-Fi, but a, a phenomenal conversation. You know, no one better versed to cover the landscape and the history and the historical run that this Michigan team has had this year than Rich Eisen. So, uh, Rich, we really appreciate your time, man. For I know you're super busy. Got a full slate of NFL games to cover this weekend as well. And then we all know what you'll be doing Monday night watching your alma mater, the Michigan Wolverines, win. So, uh, guys, you heard us announce it early early in this podcast it is called the those who stay fund remember last year it was called the one more year fund making a big push in the nil community we could use your help 